Salutations from the Music City, a land where a true Super Bowl contender has been starved of them for some time. With the AAF destroyed from within and the Predators getting catfish chucked at them, the NFL is the only game in town for now. Those poor bachelorette parties, not realizing that this is the new Medina. May we have more laughs in this first round. With the first pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Kyler Murray, quarterback. Oklahoma. Arizona. Why? They continue to baffle any sort of logic and push a nuke on their organization yet again. Here's the thing, I'm not laughing at Kyler Murray. He's a talented athlete and has potential at this level. I'm laughing at the god-awful asset management by the Cardinals organization. Why would you not only draft a quarterback, but trade up to select him if you're just going to abandon him a year later? Don't quarterbacks have a longer development curve? Was it Josh Rosen's fault that his offensive line was garbage? Thanks to your short-sightedness, Rosen was traded for 10 cents on the dollar. I don't care about scheme fake, Kyler's going to be running for his fucking life hoping someone gets open. That's not the recipe for success. If you ruin this kid, Cardinals, honestly, it's just the same shit. The San Francisco 49ers select Nick Bosa. Let's see, a potentially generational edge rusher and a team that desperately needed a new face of the defense. Sounds like an easy decision to make. They failed to get Khalil Mack last year, but this is a nice consolation prize. A younger version of him. If he stays healthy, unlike most of the 49ers, it could be a Hall of Fame career. Now he'll get to run after Kyler Murray twice a year. The New York Jets select Quinnen Williams. Nose tackle, Alabama. To think that the Jets nearly butt-fumbled their way out of this pick by trading down for a minuscule return. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed, and they must settle for a pick that can anchor a defensive line for a decade. That side of the ball is now all but rebuilt over the past few years. How horrible. The Oakland Raiders select Cleland Farrell, defensive wow. end. Clemson. Now I see why Gruden and Mayock told the entire scouting staff to fuck off last week. They didn't want us to see that they reached to the point where Inspector Gadget told them to cut it out. Ed Oliver, Josh Allen, fuck that, they need to get the guy that wasn't projected to go in the top 20. It's as if Al Davis never died and is still getting a hard-on for raw attributes at big-name universities. True, Oakland had a need to replace Khalil Mack, but it wouldn't shock me if they failed to trade down here. None of this makes sense to me otherwise. Never Bay Buccaneer select, Devin White, linebacker. A relatively safe pick of a player that the Bucks are hoping will solidify their defense for the first time in about 15 years. Their D was a hot mess thanks to a combination of awfulness and injury, so they'll need to build quickly, especially in that murderer's row of a division. Prepare to be chucked into the fire, Devin. The New York Giants select Daniel Jones, oh, quarterback. Okay. Wow. Fucking wow. When you thought the Giants offseason couldn't get any worse, they get a total stiffy for a project quarterback they saw for 20 minutes at the Senior Bowl. To put this in perspective, New York just spent significant draft capital on a guy who was unanimously ranked below Dwayne Haskins and even Drew Locke on some boards. Some weren't calling for this guy to be drafted until the third round. It's not even the Haskins thing that bugs me. One of the best edge rushers in the draft and Josh Allen falls into your lap and you piss all over it. You know, you probably could have gotten this guy at 17, or hell, even your second round pick, but nope, they made Oakland's reach look like a kid going for the cookie jar. Gentlemen, this guy better be a Hall of Famer. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Josh Allen, defensive end, Kentucky. Jacksonville, you got lucky as hell. Have another elite piece for your defense as two teams ahead of you went for their pet picks. Despite needs on offense, he's the best player available. The rest of the AFC South is now pissed at this revelation. The Detroit Lions select TJ Hawkinson. This pick is simple to me. The Lions are desperate to marinate and copy the Patriots' way in every facet of being. One of the big keys to this is finding their own Gronk. Hawkinson has the attributes to do it. A pure physical specimen that may have been taken a bit too high, but if he's anywhere near Gronk, no one will be regretting it. The Buffalo Bills select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle. Houston. Buffalo has been quietly assembling a quality defense over the past few years. Significant amounts of draft capital have been banked into turning the Bills back into a legitimate foe. Ed Oliver is another piece to it. He's unorthodox, but he gets results. The question is, will it convert at the next level? If it does, let's just say Buffalo will have a force down the middle. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Devin Bush, linebacker Michigan. Fucking yes. The Steelers did what I thought they wouldn't do and chose to be bold. Pushing hard and trading up to add a quality player at a position of significant need. Pittsburgh hasn't been the same since Shazier got injured, and Devin Bush looks like a man that can do good work replacing him. 
Just wish I could say the same about the whole Ben extension, but... The Cincinnati Bengals select Jonah Williams, tackle, Alabama. Cincinnati continues their work in trying to rebuild their offensive line. It's not exactly a sexy pick, but the line is crucial to the success of an organization. The Bungles know this all too well over the past few years. Bad lines can lead to disaster. I won't complain about an alignment unless it's an insane reach. And Williams isn't. The Green Bay Packers select Rashawn Gary. Linebacker, Michigan. Once again, another need filled by a team with significant issues on defense the past few years. Although I wish I could say the same for the drama that seeped out of your organization as of late. Whom do I side with? The quarterback with a massive chip on his shoulder who treats wide receivers like chattel? Or the ex-head coach that checked out and was carried until his legs atrophied? Decisions, man. The Miami Dolphins select Christian Wilkins. Defensive tackle, Clemson. The Dolphins were apparently gung-ho on tanking to oblivion in order to get the prize of Tua next year. Although acquiring Josh Rosen and hopefully giving him a chance to survive may change that, they're more focused on trying to build their new foundations. First up, a potential defensive keystone in Christian Wilkins. He also tried to injure the Ginger Hammer, so he gets bonus points off the bat. This will probably get him a two-game suspension knowing the shield, but it's worth it. The Atlanta Falcons select Chris Lindstrom. Once again, I know O-linemen aren't the most ideal picks in the world, but they're necessary. The Falcons are in a bit of a shuffle with their interior line, and Lindstrom should help out with that, especially with his college resume. A great line is always key to a great offense, you know? The Washington Redskins select Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. I was hoping for serious laughter when I heard that Dan Snyder was taking over control of the first round of this draft, but like the Redskins themselves, I am merely disappointed. Washington ended up getting the guy they wanted without having to lift a finger. He'll probably sit behind Case Keenum for this season, but at least he might be better than mediocrity. Whether or not you fuck it up like the last two QBs you developed is to be determined. The Carolina Panthers select Brian Burns. Defensive end, Florida State. This is the token Thomas Davis and or Julius Peppers replacement on the defense. Whether or not he has the career those two had, who knows. But a man who has an appreciation for Spider-Man like he does, that can only be a good thing for the future. The New York Giants select Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. For those of you looking to laugh at the New York football Giants some more, prepare to be disappointed. They returned to a traditional path and picked up a big-name defensive tackle from a big-name school. No complaints on this pick, but the Jones pick looms large. I just can't get the taste of it out of my mouth. The Minnesota Vikings select Garrett Bradbury. Center, North Carolina State. The offensive line for the Vikings was a massive issue for them last season, so this pick doesn't surprise me whatsoever. With the money they've invested in Cousins, they need to protect him at all costs. Bradbury should be a centerpiece of it, no pun intended. The Tennessee Titans select Jeffrey Simmons. Defensive tackle, Mississippi State. Ah yes, the local teams pick to rally the Nashville faithful and make this logistical nightmare worth it in the long run. Simmons is a relative question mark, not because of his abilities, but because he tore his ACL while training for the Combine. With those kind of injuries, who the hell knows if his explosiveness comes back. But he is young enough where it may not hurt him that much. I would say that's the worst thing to happen, but then comes video footage of him hitting a woman back in high school. You know how people are with stuff that happened years ago, it's gonna be hard to shake that reputation. Being good will help. The Denver Broncos select Noah Fant. Tight end, Iowa. The Broncos are doubling down on the Flacco era with his favorite weapon. Check downs to the tight end. With Fant, they're getting a talented specimen, but to achieve his full potential, he will need more than screens and checkdowns. Don't worry about that, John Elway maintained his narrative by picking a tall white QB and Drew Locke in the second round. He can be Osweiler for a few seasons, just as long as he develops unlike Osweiler. The Green Bay Packers select Darnell Savage, defensive back, Maryland. I am not ready for this newfound aggressiveness by the Green Bay Packers. Once again, trading up to select a position of serious need in the secondary to complement Adrian Amos. With their moves in free agency in the draft, the defense has been near fully rebuilt. We may no longer have the crutch of calling the Packers D a dumpster fire just for the sake of it. The sleeping giant may have been awoken by years of organizational ineptitude. Good God. The Philadelphia Eagles select Andre Dillard. Tackle. Washington State. Philadelphia meet your heir apparent to Jason Peters. Hell, you even traded up a few spots to one-up the Texans. That's some shrewd dealing, Mr. Roseman. The aging offensive line will be of concern once Peters and Kelsey retire, so loading up for that day is a good idea, even if they have other needs. Carson Wentz's health is paramount to their future. Donovan McNabb's criticisms be damned. The Houston Texans select 
Titus Howard, tackle, wow. Alabama State. I take it the Eagles took the guy they were gunning for, so they had to scramble for the next best option. The offensive line is a paramount issue for the Texans, especially considering they gave up the most sacks in the league last year. Even with Deshaun Watson, you just can't have him running for his life. Playing with fire is a bad idea. The Oakland Raiders select Josh Jacobs, there it is. running back. Alabama. Well, running back was a need for the Raiders, and Josh Jacobs is the best one available. He could be a good get, but I just feel that they should have focused more on defense here. That's secondary last year, man. Yeesh. The Baltimore Ravens select Marquise Brown. There it is. There we go. Wide receiver, Oklahoma. Antonio Brown's cousin headed towards the Steelers' most hated rival. Ironic, Baltimore may have something they haven't had in a long time a big game wide receiver. He's undersized but athletic as hell. If Lamar develops his arm, this combo will have the Ravens salivating. Word of advice, be Antonio, but don't be Antonio. If you know what I mean. The Washington Redskins select Montez Sweat, linebacker, Mississippi State. The Redskins trading up and making another smart, efficient pick. Sweat dropped a decent bit due to an alleged heart issue, but a second opinion stated that it was a misdiagnosis. If this second opinion is true, the skins may have gotten themselves a steal. Are we sure Dan Snyder took over the first round? This is far too logical for this team. The Oakland Raiders select Jonathan Abram, defensive back, Mississippi State. The Raiders, with their third first round pick of the draft, address the notoriously porous secondary with... Another safety? I mean, it's weird, but Abram is a solid prospect. You can't have enough depth back there, so I'll give this one a pass. The Los Angeles Chargers select Jerry Tillery, defensive tackle, Notre Dame. This is the Corey Legit replacement for the Bolts to solidify their interior D-line. They got themselves a big boy whom should be very hard to move and has great acceleration to boot. Guys that tall with that skill set are rare to come by. If he develops, he could be something special for a defense that is already stout. The Seattle Seahawks select L.J. Collier, defensive end, TCU. Want irony? Frank Clark's replacement was selected with one of the picks they received from the Chiefs for trading Frank Clark. It's going to be another year where the Seahawks will have to fill holes quickly. Not just with Clark, but now Doug Baldwin may be at the point where he never plays another down of football again. Getting a combine legend in DK Metcalf in the second round could help with that. Russell Wilson's incredible payday will need all of the viable targets he can get. Speaking of the Chiefs, how are they doing? Oh. Oh god. The New York Giants select DeAndre Baker, defensive back, Georgia. The Giants make another bold move and trade up. Unfortunately, it's again not a laughable pick as Baker is a solid prospect and fills a need for the G-Man. No complaints here, but is he really the first cornerback off the board? I thought there were some ones that could have gone around pick 20 or so. Strange. At least it can't get worse for the Giants. Fucking hell, man! The Atlanta Falcons select Caleb McGarry. Tackle, Washington. The Falcons straight up into the first round as well in draft. Another lineman? Man, they are really doubling down on protecting Matt Ryan and company. Why not add some defensive depth? The lack of it is what killed you last season, you know. Now it's just hoping mid-round picks pan out. Not crazy optimistic about that. The New England Patriots select Nikhil Harry. Wide receiver. Arizona State. A wide receiver that may turn into a legitimate threat for the ageless Tom Brady. Julian Edelman may not have to carry the heavens and the earth after all. This is especially since Gronk did the wise thing and retired while at the top. He just wasn't the same player last year. Injuries had taken their toll and his explosiveness was gone. No matter what happens, he's a lock for Ken. Now only if he doesn't dent his bust like he dented the Lombardi Trophy. I'd give it 10 to 1 odds he does it anyway. So that's the first round of the draft. Yay. I'm not going to say a single word about the Tennessee Titans record against uh -oh. the Indianapolis oh, Colts boy. because I was a punter and there's no reason for me to talk about that. <laughs> With that being said, we did not punt much against the Tennessee Titans, so you probably have no clue who I am to begin. <laughs>